Hey, what's happening guys? In our last video, we talked about magnets and coils and the link between electricity and magnetism and how when you have one, you got to have the other. And one of the names that I mentioned there was Hans Orsted. He is a Danish scientist and he conclusively proved the link between electricity and magnetism. Um, and he actually did it accidentally when he was trying to talk about the possibility of electricity and magnetism being related to one another. And he did it in front of his entire class. Again, he passed the current through a wire and it deflected the needle of a compass and that thereby proved that things were connected. So what began as conjecture at the start of the class was confirmed at the end and Ersted had to re revise all of his lecture notes for future classes. It, it discovered the way for a whole new branch of science called electromagnetics. Now moving on from there, detailed experiments showed that the magnetic field produced by an electric current is always oriented perpendicular to the direction of flow. And there's a simple method for explaining this called the left hand rule. Let me draw something here and we'll talk about it. So here's a simple way to look at the left hand rule and the perpendicularity of the magnetic fields around the wire. So we have our wire, our conductor here, and we have our power source. And if you take your left hand and you put it in the hitchhiking position and you point your thumb in the direction of the current, or if you don't know the direction of the current, if you put your, th your fingers around the conductor, your thumb will always point in the direction of the flow. So here, let me, let me try and, <laughs> let me try and draw a hand. I guess that's probably better than, yeah, no, no, it's probably not better. But you get the idea. When we have our fingers wrapped around the conductor, the thumb of our left hand is always going to point in the direction of flow. Now, the magnetic field that encircles a straight piece of wire has no poles. It is neither north nor south, and it's very weak. It's enough to, you know, deflect a compass, but not much more. If we want to create a stronger magnetic field, i.e. have more flux, then what we can do is we can take our wire, our conductor, and coil it. Once we have our wire coiled, we will create a stronger electric or a magnetic field, and it will have polarity, i.e. it will be north and south. And the force that we've created here is called magnetomotive force, MMF. And it's analogous to electromotive force in a pure electric circuit. But can you have a poor electric circuit? There's the question. The answer is no. Because where there's electricity, there's magnetism. And where there's magnetism, there is electricity. So an electromagnet which is what we're going to talk about today, is a piece of wire intended to generate a magnetic field with the passage of an electric current. All current carrying conductors will produce a magnetic field and an electromagnetic is usually conduct or constructed to maximize the strength of the field for a special purpose. We find electromagnets in research, industry, medical, consumer products. I mean, electromagnets are everywhere. So in the last video, we used a coil wire and a bar magnet. And we showed using the galvanometer that by passing the bar magnet through the coil, we were able to create an electromagnetic field there. And thus I showed you how the first electromagnetic motor was constructed. Now, another example of something like this would be a relay. So we have a coil and we have a switch. 
and when that coil is energized the electromagnetic flux field causes a switch to close so you see how everything's starting to come together here the magnet creates the electric motor the magnet creates the relay and these are things that are very core to our entire understanding of electronics and they're used in almost every device we have let's talk about our units of measurement for this if we want to talk about electricity because we have to talk about them together there's just no way around it we have voltage we have current we have resistance and we have power now voltage current resistance are all related to each other through Ohm's law okay I mean you know that it's quite simple you know E equals IR but when we want to bring in power well then we have to talk about Joule's law right P equals I times E so I times E are on opposite sides of our equation up here so we need Ohm's law to understand that and then we can use Joule's law to figure out the power from that so that is the electric side of the equation but if we move to the magnetic side of the equation when we start talking about MMF magnetomotive force we talk about field flux or just flux field intensity flux density and here's the new word for today reluctance now they all relate to each other and that's what we'll talk about whoops <laughs> so we have our EIR and our R and if we come over to our magnetic signs of the thing and we go field flux well, let's talk field force our magnetomotive force that is measured in Gilbert's then our field flux is of course measured in Maxwell's our field intensity is measured in Orsted's our flux density is Gauss and our reluctance is Gilbert's per Maxwell so you see there how they're starting to relate to each other our reluctance is our field force per our field flux so just like we have on the electric side of the fence E equals IR we have over here our reluctance is Gilbert's per Maxwell and yeah I know for those of you who are up on this stuff I left something out what I left out was permeability and we're gonna get to that in another video permeability is Gauss per Orsted and while this may seem daunting like there's just so much stuff going on here it's really more of the same thing and if we want to compare Ohm's law for electric and magnetic circuits if we take our electrical here and our magnetic here our electrical Ohm's law E equals IR over here we have our MMF is um, Gilbert's per Maxwell and I'm no good at writing this one this is just like a crazy R looking thing but they're related because they're two sides of the same coin where there's one there's the other 
you pass a current, you get a magnetic field. You have a magnetic field with a conductor passing through it, you get a current. You can't have one without the other. Now, if we go further into this, and I'm not going to get real into this mathematics of it, I'm just going to kind of touch on it here a little bit. Let me make some room here. either the case of our electrical or our magnetic sides of the coin, a longer piece of material will provide a greater opposition. Or either our resistance is greater or our reluctance is greater. All other factors being equal. So we're, like I said, we're just touching on it here. But a major caveat that you're going to find is the reluctance of material of a uh, the reluctance of a material to a magnetic flux changes with the concentration of flux going through it. So this makes the Ohm's law for a magnetic circuit nonlinear, non and it's more difficult to work with than the electrical version. Think of it like having a resistor that changes resistance as the current changes going through it. It's like a self-variable resistor. And that's why when we were doing this stuff for you know, the beginnings of teaching electrical engineering, we just touch on this so that you have an understanding of it. And if somebody talks about uh, flux or intensity or density, you, you know what they're talking about. But we really don't want to get into the pure mathematics of it here because it starts becoming increasingly difficult. And frankly, I haven't done this stuff in you know a good long time and I don't really remember that much of it. So I had to rely on some notes here for this one. But anyway, that's part two of the relationship between electricity and magnets. All you gotta remember is we can't have one without the other. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.